the sea of cups become sequins beneath the Spanish sun. Crushed plastic at 7am as Benny Kassim runs riot. Gasp as the flames lick the second floor ceiling. The Dublin club we were dancing in mistaking fire alarm for house tune. Wake me from the middle of a road in a Donegal cul-de-sac. Introduce us to hidden treasures deep in the heart of Milan. Leave the warehouse party with a stick and poke of some symbol on your foot. Go to a gallery launch in Brussels, a documentary in Dusseldorf. Shine brighter than either of us could ever have possibly dreamt of. When Sabutio and Kitten School were the order of the day. Sell high-end vintage glad rags at a flea market in Walthamstow. Dip your chips in what could only be described as a puddle's worth of vinegar. Make painstaking attempts to give me insight into modern art. Neck Alcapops in Belfast in a Kremlin-themed gay club. Carve your own path, no compromise. Never flinch at sacrifice. Set your heart on the task that makes it purr. Never call it a night. Speak Italian with a Yorkshire twang. Smoke menthol and go on runs. Shine on, silver clad. Show the world what it's missing. Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Abbott. Welcome to Insta Session number 47. Um, I wasn't here the last few weeks, but uh, I'm very grateful to Tori Garbo and Louise Pazakali for taking on the hosting duties. I'm back hosting tonight. And my guest poet is <laughs> Romina Ramos. I'm just going to put my phone on do not disturb mode. Otherwise, it'll just vibrate all the way through. And I do not want that to happen. Cool. Here we go. Sorry, I should have done that sooner. So, uh, Romina Ramos is a gender fluid Portuguese poet living in England. She's about to graduate with a BA in creative writing from the University of Bolton, where she's been developing her poetry for the last three years. Prior to this, Romina trained and worked as a chef for 10 years and had no experience in the poetry world. Recently, Romina has had her work published in the Bolton Review, showcased on Soho Radio, and been shortlisted for the Murky Books New Writers Prize. In the future, Romina hopes to work in the community to not only make poetry more accessible to everyone, but to encourage the youth of today to use poetry and other creative endeavours as an outlet to deal with different issues, including, but not limited to, mental health and poverty. So, I shall invite Romina to join. If it's going to let me... Is this... Why is it not letting me? It's really weird. Uh. Usually, if I just tap that, it sort of lets me invite you to join, Romina. I don't know if it gave you... Uh, oh, here we go. Every week. Honestly, I've been doing this for a, over a year now. And Instagram changes the thing, like, every week. Hello. Hi, yeah, you're oh, all right. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, good. Are you? Yeah, good, Ta. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Ah, no worries. No worries. So, uh, you're currently based in or near Bolton. Yeah. Bolton. And you're originally from Portugal. Yeah. Uh, how are you? How are you enjoying Bolton life? I mean, I've been here for twenty years this year, so right. <laughs> it's more than <laughs> it's more than half of my life. <laughs> yeah, but I'm used to it by now. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm I like it. I've I've gotten used to it. Um, yeah. it's very different. I, you think it's only I know it's only Europe, but it was still a big cultural shock when you when we actually moved here. But yeah. obviously, in twenty years, you um. You get used to it, don't you? I mean, I don't, yeah. I really don't sound foreign at all. Other, certain words you might pick up on, but obviously you pick up the accent. And if you heard my brother speak, I mean, they really sound Bol Boltonian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, I should have, instead of making a clumsy assumption, I should have like asked you when you moved to Bolton or whatever, because I'm never sure. You might have moved there two years ago. I don't know. But yeah. um, cool. That's that's Bolton's a pretty cool place, though, isn't it? It's, 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 it's an interesting spot. Yeah, it's on the come up for sure. I mean, it looks so different to when we first moved here. Things like the marketplace is like unrecognizable. But uh, I see value in that, and I think it's a good thing for the city because when I remember when we first came here, it was like it was always ranking in the top five worst places to live in the in the UK. But um, yeah. I think it's on the come up a little bit. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, renovation and stuff going on. Yeah, fair play, fair play. Um, it was there much of a scene, like literary scene, uh, in, in and around Bolton before COVID. To be honest with you, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Um, before I joined, uh, before I 
enrolled at uni in the last three years, I I had no um, experience. I've never performed at a live gig. Um, yeah. I've done a few open mics on Zoom during lockdown, um, which I found really good. It's a good step to get out there. Like, especially I've got anxiety, so I'm super nervous and I've got stage fright. And But uh, doing it on Zoom was really um, interesting and, and yeah. good experience, yeah. But I'm not too sure um, what the scene was before. I'm sure, like, the oldest working men's club in, in the UK is in Bolton as well. And they had a really strong poetry night, as far as I'm aware, but I don't know. But, well, you're in the Northwest. I mean, that's the most culturally, culturally vibrant area of the country, isn't it? So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, and there's lots in Manchester as well, and I'm only 20 minutes out, so obviously there's a lot to get involved in there as well. Sound, sound. So um, you were shortlisted for the Murky Books New Writers Prize. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, I, I was, it, it was a big shock um, even to be long-listed, but to get shortlisted was, was uh, incredible. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how did that come about? Was that something that you applied for or did somebody nominate you? Or? Yeah, um, it was my, uh, my poetry lecturer at uni who actually sent me the link and it was like it was the deadline it was that night and it was like I really think you should apply and I was like ah um but you know I just did it because why not and um yeah so all you had to do was like send uh three poems in um cool and that was all really that's all they read and then after the long list they read another two um and then I was shortlisted but yeah it was just a competition so you send in you send in a portion of your work and yeah it just goes from there but it was really good because um, to see poetry, because I was competing against fiction and non-fiction writers as well, and to see poetry make it that high up, it's amazing. Yeah, that's very impressive. Well, do you fancy sharing some work? Yeah, definitely. Um, 100%. Let me just... Cool. So this one is called um, Small Spaces, and it's a little bit in the vein of um, Accrington Bricks, that, you know, that you played on the, on the um, Soho radio. Cool. So it's called Small Spaces. This tiny town is a thousand tiny towns. It is neighborhoods and villages and cities. It is cathedrals and temples and mosques. It is Chinatowns and curry miles and Mozambican chicken shops. It is fish and chips tan lines and tikka masala winds. Culture crawls through every city here, through every street here. I once worked in an Italian restaurant staffed by seven different nationalities. I can say welcome in five languages, but in English, the accent never really fits. This town is so small, my tongue always tries to escape. This town is so rich, it is ridden with poverty. It is empty skate parks full of needles and gardens with benches for beds and trees for cemeteries. It is drugs on school buses and eggs on taxi windows. It is mass produced children trying dangerous, dangerously to be big, bigger than this tiny town. Nice. I love that. Awesome. Eggs on taxi windows. Like I know there's so many beautiful lines in there, but that one just stuck out straight away. Oh, great. Um, so you you've you've been writing for three years, and you you were completely new to poetry. Um, was it what was it that made you take the leap from? Yeah, yeah it's a big career change. Um, so I've always written um some sort of poetry. You know, through all my for being a kid, as a form of like yeah. as a way to like deal with feelings and emotions and that sort of thing but I never really took it seriously and back then I never considered it poetry and now I can see with my training that you know it probably was on the making yeah. anyway <laughs> but um yeah I mean I was I trained as a chef straight from school and I was in that for 10 years and about five years in I knew that it wasn't what I wanted for life but I was just right. a bit scared of taking that leap you know the years went on and I was like 25 and then I was 26 and then I was thinking too late to go back to uni and blah 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 but yeah you know I was living in Ireland and um oh, but, wow. yeah I lived there for a year I went through a really bad breakup and I was just drinking loads and I had no direction in life and then I thought that year my mum graduated at 52 and I thought I went to a graduation and I thought if my mum can do it I could I should just go and do it so I just yeah, too really. yeah so I just took the lip and the the leap and do it and did it and it's been the best decision I've ever made yeah cool oh that's awesome um, yeah, poetry is not the most obvious choice to ditch your career for, is it? But <laughs> yeah, it's well worth it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just have a love for it. It's it's one of the only ways that I can express myself 
completely and truth in the, in the most truthful way is for the poetry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are there any particular poets that you're enjoying reading at the moment? I know that's a tough question, but... Um, at the moment, I'm reading... I've just read, uh, read um, Romulan Ante's um, Antiemetic for Homesickness, which pretty much cool. blew me away, which, yeah, fantastic. And I'm reading... Uh, I've just read Caleb Femi's Poor as well, which is, yeah, blew me away yeah. as well. So they're yeah, the yeah. best two I've read this year. Just been shortlisted for best first collection, on it, Caleb? Yeah, 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 I saw that this morning. Yeah. Cool. Well, do you fancy sharing another poem? Yeah, let's go. Definitely. Um, Lovely. This one is called "Technically It's Wednesday Morning." Technically, it's Wednesday morning, and we are at Neve's house in the conservatory, which is soundproof. But two girls decide that this door frame is the perfect shelter to weather a discussion about the upcoming upcoming referendum. So the angry exclamations, political hashtags and unanswered question marks filter through to the hospitable but empty lounge, like lost ghosts trapped in the strange corridor of time between night and day, when the only things awake are things like us, two girls, wondering if it's too late to take another pill, or maybe it's too early. I tell Neve it's never too late, she says it's not so bad, the boy has moved away now, she doesn't run into or away from him at parties anymore, and besides, it isn't his fault. She was so faded that she doesn't remember, not really. I tell her this is not a game of strip monopoly. You can't just get out of jail for free on a technicality. After all, it is still Tuesday night, we have not been to sleep yet, and there is always another line. Nice, very nice. I mean, I can't relate to that at all, what you're talking about. Um, no, that's great. I love that. That that crossover point, you've got to make a decision and there's no going back at that point. I love that. That's just, yeah, I, that's a great poem. So vivid and, yeah. Sorry, I'm not a very good critic. No, it's fine. <laughs> I just <don't> enjoy. <laughs> I can't articulate. I just enjoy. Um Cool, yeah. I, I really loved, um, so as you know, I, I first saw your poem, Accurate and Brick, and we played it on Roaring Twenties Radio, and it got a really great response. Um, and Selena Godden, who co-presents it, she loved it as well. So, um, yeah, I was really glad when you submitted that poem. Um, it was nice to come across your work. Um, yeah, and hopefully I'll see you at a gig at some point in North West. Yeah, yeah. I want to get into um, saying MCR, um, but it's just, yeah. like I said before, I've got a bit of anxiety, so I'm trying to work myself out to, to go out in the world and actually perform live, but um, I yeah. definitely want to give it a go, because... Uh, yeah, just a little step. <laughs> oh, yeah, too right. It's the most terrifying thing you'll ever do, but it's the best thing you'll ever do as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Cool. Um, well, do you fancy sharing another one? I'm yeah. conscious that I don't want to waffle and take away your poetry no, don't time. Worry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this one is called Harry Potter's Doppelganger. Um, and it's about when I first came here. <clears throat> On the first day at a new school, the kids point and say, you're a wizard, Harry. But here, all magic is black magic. So they call me Bruja, or is it Puta? They only want my tongue in their mouth if it's drizzled with dark art. They say she who must not be touched. I must not be seen, nor heard, or smell. This is a parallel world. I would rather make friends with the Dementors. Here, the nice kids are the ones speaking in parcel tongue. And I am slithering into a forbidden trip. The scars of my childhood hurt, but nobody cares. Nobody believes you are in danger when your arch enemy is yourself. Wow. Love that. What a closing line. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Um, so, I know uh, this might be a long way off yet, but where would you, what would you be your ultimate aim right now in terms of releasing something as in would you rather do like a collection would you do like a show would you do an album like where do you see your poetry going in terms of its like main output at the moment at the moment i'm just trying to write as much as possible um, yeah because obviously over the last three years because i i've only been writing such a small amount of time most of what i've yeah. written has been for assignments and that kind of thing so my body of work isn't massive um yeah so, yeah, I'm just trying to get 
a decent body of work but i'm open to anything really i'd love ideally i'd love a pamphlet or a collection or something like that yeah. coming out but um i see the kind of thing that you do on here like with you know a spoken word label and stuff like that and i'd love to do stuff like that because when i first really started to write it was when i was little it was like i'd always wanted to write music and raps and stuff like that yeah yeah um so i'd love to be able to combine the two the two things for sure i'm all yeah i'm always just curious like um because, I mean, obviously everyone's different, but quite a few people have said to me, oh, I wrote that poem with an audience in mind on stage. I wrote that poem with a magazine in mind. I wrote that poem. And I'm just curious. I know, like you say, you've not been writing that long, but some people have a very definite, this is what I'm aiming yeah. towards. Yeah, but no, I think recently, you've got the best approach. <laughs> yeah. I, recently, I've, I have been writing uh, for performance just because it's my process. When I'm writing, I have to read it all out loud to myself anyway. So it kind yeah, of actually... Yeah just falls into that and I always feel like when I do that there's like a sort of rhythm and a little flow to it um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like all my poems even when I try not to they always end up music like a little bit musical in a way <laughs> yeah fair play. well yeah there's absolutely like I, I I totally get that and there's no reason why that can't work on the page as well I'm just curious that's all cause yeah we're all different aren't we yeah definitely um but yeah no I yeah I sort of came into it through music as well and like being informed by rap and music and just the syllables and the rhythm and the yeah yeah well it, it comes across i like the musicality in your work it's great thanks um cool do you fancy sharing sharing another yeah i've got another one to go um so this is called yeah but where from really i don't really think that is an explanation <laughs> um i come from a place where people drink eight espressos a day where sardines are fished from the sea at 5am and grilled for tourists at a local restaurant by noon. I come from grainy sand and the Atlantic Ocean. I come from long hot summer days swimming with inflatable dolphins and wintry Sunday mornings building sandcastles with pink gloves on. I come from Catholic women and faithless men. I come from women who raise the children of other women and men who do not raise their own. I come from single parents I came to a place where it rains torrentially in July while brightly coloured trucks whistle through photocopied neighbourhoods selling rainbow cones and sprinkles to local children. I came to a place where football is a religion, fish and chips on a Friday night is a tradition, where schools have uniforms but I am still the odd one out. Played skirts can't hide the stretch marks of nationality. They say yeah but where from really, like my split tongue doesn't quite fit in this island's mouth. But the thing is, I don't even like sardines. And I take my coffee white with milk and sugar. That was, that was fucking beautiful. That was so good. <laughs> Thank you. So good. So, yeah, just, I mean, I, I've only been to Portugal once, like, but I just it rush all rushing through the images and the smells and the, yeah, yeah. So good. So yeah, I found myself recently writing with loads of like the sen like writing with the senses, so like, like trying to evoke loads of smells and noises yeah. and sounds. Yeah, smells the most evocative uh, sense in it, I think. I, I don't know. Apparently, it's no, that's I the thing. I think, yeah. like. I think the smell yeah, can bring yeah, you yeah. back to a time like instantly. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah, just just brilliant. The, just the pace of it and the range of it and the the um, uh, Catholic women and faithless men and women raising ch other people's children and the men not raising their own and yeah, just wow, love that. Um, so it's ten to. Um, I just if you've got a couple or or one or whatever that you definitely want to share, I'm just letting you know you've got ten minutes. But at the same time, if you don't want to share anymore and you just want to chat, that's also completely fine. Yeah, whatever I've got you're more. more, more I've got one more because when I was trying to do a little set list for this, I realised that a lot of my poems are a little bit heavy. <laughs> so I was like, right, I want to finish on something that's a little bit lighter. So I do have one more to share. Cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So this one's uh, called The Flea Market and was actually published in the Bolton Review, this issue. So here we go. The Flea Market. Our town is haunted by stained glass gods and crawling with slithering saints. 
but on the third Sunday of every month, the flea market comes. On this Sunday, it is permitted to skip morning mass. On this Sunday, there is a dif different kind of preaching. There are no bodies of lost prophets, but this is where Jesus is found. Here in this old car, barbecuing evangelical octopus, in the persistence of a man haggling down the price of a red BMX, in the, small, in the smile of a small girl, at this gift, this confirmation of love. This is where faith is born. No knaves, no pews, but this is where prayers are answered. Beautiful. Nice, very nice. I like that a lot. Yes. Good set list. Solid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult putting together a set list, isn't it, sometimes? But I think it's a really important part of figuring out your journey as a, a writer as well. You know, like doing that sort of in a set list and thinking, oh, that poem works well there and whatever. I think that's a really valuable part of you developing your body of work. Like, yeah. Yeah, I've only, yeah, I've never had to really think about that. But for my last. Uh creative project for uni I had to it was 15 poems and you had to they had to be in an order and there had to be a reason for yeah. and stuff so I really got to think about why they work together and how they work together and stuff and yes yeah, it's, it's a fun project because you get to see you get to see your work in different lenses and paths and stuff yeah yeah and sometimes you find out things about poems that you didn't even realize don't you do you know what I mean? yeah. like seeing it in that context you know oh, actually that poem's that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, funny. it's a funny life. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a good one, though. Um, so, this might be a bit of a weird question, but if, say, like, fast forward a year, there's a big gig on in, well, Bolton, Manchester, wherever, who would be your dream lineup to share a bill with? So, you can be on a bill with three other poets. Who do you think, who would, who would you choose? Uh, Kate Tempest. Um, Caleb Femi and um, <laughs> you know what? This might be a bit weird, but Holly McNish. That's cool. Why is that I, a bit I, weird? Uh, because you know, certain people. I mean, not I. I love Holly, and I've got a lot of books and stuff, and uh, I'd love to see her live. But there's all there's this conversation in there in the poetry world about you know where she actually fits in. Yeah, I. I I think there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of rubbish out there, basically. I love... She I gets love. a lot of stick. She gets a lot of shit. Yeah. She's yeah. really, really divisive, um, particularly amongst, like, the establishment. Um, yeah. She seems to infuriate a lot of people, but I think everyone that she infuriates seems to be, like... I, look, I'm, I'm Team Holly, but I know yeah. what you're saying, like, but I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad you said that. No, and, um, yeah. I mean, I'm a big yeah. fan of anything that makes poetry accessible to people. A lot of people I speak to, a lot of youth I speak to, seem to think that poetry is like this middle class white bubble, you know, for yeah. those kind of people. And it's really not. And anything that breaks those barriers and makes it accessible to any anyone, um, I'm a big fan and supporter of, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. But it, like accessible is the word accessible is like the biggest backhanded compliment you can have in the poetry world. And it's like, oh, it's very accessible. Yeah, I know, but I don't get that. Yeah. I, mean, I know. It's like you're yeah. dumbing it down or whatever and betraying the art form. And yeah. Yeah. Nah, team, I'm Team Holly. I think she's yeah, great. Exactly. Like, um, you know, millions and millions of views on YouTube, like loads, shitloads of book sales. All her gigs are sold out. She works her ass off. Yeah. So. Yeah, so Kay Tempest, Caleb Femi, Holly McNish, and Romina Ramos. That's a pretty good lineup. <laughs> That'd be a dream. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, let's put it out there, put it into the universe, and see what happens. Yeah, man. Awesome. Well, look, thanks so much for um, sharing your time and sharing your work. I really, really appreciate it. It's been and, a pleasure. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. It's great. Great to. I'm. I'm glad you sent your work in. It's nice to know your work. And uh, yeah, I'll see. Uh, well, I'm in Leeds, so it's not too far away. So I'm yeah. sure I'll see you up and on at some point. Definitely. Brilliant. Cool. Thank All you right. so much. Take care. All see right, you later. Take care. See you later. So that was fantastic, uh, Romina Ramos. Uh, make sure you follow Romina on here and also on Twitter if you are that way inclined. Um, be back next week with session number 48 with Rory Aaron. Uh, Rory was meant to be on a few weeks ago, but we had to postpone at the last minute due to.
unforeseen circumstances. Thank you all to, for your lovely comments. Thank you all for watching. Um, yeah, session number 48. We're nearly there. I'm going to do 50. So join us next week. Thank you, Robert. That's very kind. Join us next week, half seven to eight. Take care. I'll see you then. Thank you very much. Yeah.